Hello everybody, Steve here. Thanks for tuning into my channel. It's been a little while since I last uploaded a video. In my previous video, I showed you the benefits of using an MLA30 magnetic loop antenna for your shortwave radio listening. Uh, in that video, I gave you some tips on how to set it up, uh, how to hook it up, and I demonstrated its reception improvements using a radio spectrometer. Uh, today's video is going to be a follow-up to that video because there is a couple of things that I left out and connectivity being a major uh, item that I left out. Uh, I failed to mention that you can connect to the MLA30 using a smaller compact shortwave radio such as this one. Uh, most of these compact radios give you the option to connect an external antenna using the 1 8 port uh, located on the side or on the back of it. Uh, this radio is the Radiwell R108. And here's another compact radio. This is the Texan PL330. And there is its option to connect an external antenna. So the MLA30 uses a coaxial SMA connection, like what you see here. This comes directly off the MLA30's biasing T. There it is there. Here is the MLA30. I have it set up inside my house uh, just for today's demonstration. So to, depending what type of radio you own, you will most likely need some sort of adapter to connect the MLA30. In my previous video, we were using this BNC adapter. It's BNC to SMA. So to connect these compact radios, this is the adapter you're gonna need. It's got your SMA on one side and your 1 8 jack on the other. Uh, these adapters are very inexpensive. I found this on Amazon for $13. Um, one thing I wanna point out is don't confuse an SMA connector with a type F connector. Type F is what you'd find on the back of a TV set. It looks very similar in photographs online, but they are different. They will not work. The Type F is much larger than the SMA. All right, let's get to it. All right, I have the radio switched on and the telescopic antenna extended. I'm tuned into 10,000 kilohertz or 10 megahertz. That is one of the frequencies that the U.S. time signal is found on. They are based out of Fort Collins, Colorado. They also have a transmitter site on the Hawaiian Islands. You can find them on 2.5 megahertz, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. If you're tuning into them during daylight hours, you want to tune in to the higher frequencies and at night, the lower frequencies. Give a listen. As you can hear, there's a lot of noise, and I do not hear the time signal. I'll go ahead and plug in the MLA30. Just bear with me. There we go. I would say that's a good improvement in your reception. I'm gonna, just for fun, let's tune into 15. There we are, coming in nice. Uh, up here in the upper right corner of my display, that's your antenna strength. I won't get into the science behind that in this video. Just gonna unplug the MLA30. You can see that number change, and you can also see that or hear that our reception has changed. Still coming in, just not as good, not as clear. Uh, one thing about these magnetic loop antennas, they work best in urban environments. Uh, they're good at filtering out uh, RF interference, uh, like noise from power lines, or a business nearby, uh, such as a manufacturing business, something like that. 
I live out in the country. I don't have a lot of issues with RF interference out here. Just the odd thing inside the house. I notice cell phone chargers uh, and that sort of thing, they're very noisy as well. Um, I haven't tried filtering out their noise with an MLA-30. I just thought I'd put that in there as a side note. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. I hope this helped. Uh, all of my videos, most of my videos, they're geared towards uh, the beginner, amateur, or the casual radio listener. Uh, I do this for fun. If I can help anybody out with this hobby, I'm more than happy to assist with that. Anyway, take care.